Stop the recording. Now the flowers will grow. This is definitely going to be the weirdest video I'll ever make. I'm going to be playing horror games about Spongebob, regardless if they're good or bad. To do this, I launched up itch.io and just looked up Spongebob horror. It's clear that some of these games weren't trying to be serious or even scary, but rereading the title, it's not about whether it's spooky or unspooky, just that it's cursed. And if you join me in this fever dream of a video, you'll see exactly what I mean. I also play these games under a call with one or two other friends of mine, so some bits you'll hear people talk. Today is Tuesday at the Krusty Krab. Mr. Krabs had to and I went I know that hinders the experience of horror, not playing solo. So the next video I'll make like this, I'll just be playing alone. We all did make a lot of funny jokes though, so yay, content for me. Hey, no! But yeah, no, I was actually quite surprised to find a bunch of games about Spongebob horror. I began my journey on a game titled Spongebob Massacre. Spongebob hasn't gone to work in a very long time. He's been acting suspicious. Bikini, Bikini Bottom Police got a call from Mr. Krabs, Mr. Krabs with a C Wait. by the way. Hey! He reported a strange noise coming from his home. The next day, Patrick, Squidward, and Sandy were reported missing! Oh! Bikini Bottom Police decided to raid Spongebob's house. I thought that said something else. <laughs> You play as a cop, and spawn just outside Spongebob's house. Despite cops being present, you're the only one that enters the complex. Find seven Krabby Patties to open the secret door in the kitchen. Sounds fairly simple. Hopefully I can collect all of them before Spongebob shows up. Whoa, 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 chat. Oh no! Spurgle Bill, please don't kill me! Ah! Okay. Okay, guys, I have a theory. What if the reason that SpongeBob disappeared when he came close to us is because of a hallucination? A hallucination of yourself. That's right. I think that the player, instead of being a cop, is actually SpongeBob. And this is his way of recalling memories of all the murders he committed. It looks like SpongeBob gained a few new rooms that I don't remember seeing on the show. One thing I did like about this game was the pacing. It is in the normal collect X number of Y to beat the game. It's a linear path instead of an open world. As the game progresses, collecting more burgers in the process, the rooms go from a normal blue to an unfamiliar red. Also, as for the gun that you're holding, as far as I'm concerned, it has unlimited ammo. Wait a minute, these crates say they contain Krabby Patties. Why don't we just grab these instead of seven? Zero out of ten. I like my games to be as close to real life as possible. Ah, that's the stuff. We also see a few of the other characters in the show. Oh no! Like Patrick. Uh... No. Oh, and Spongebob also got Plankton too. Dude, Spongebob is really fucking tall. Oh my god. Yeah, what the oh fuck? Is he portraying Plankton? Oh, he is! He is! I'll, uh... I'll uh, leave him be. In a slim hallway, you can hear what sounds like a saw cutting through something. It turned out to be Squidward. But at least he had the crowbar from Half-Life 2. Oh, and if you're wondering what was at the end of this hallway... Kill him. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. Ah! Ian, no! So that was the first ending. The text states that three more people went missing after you. But for some reason, the police chose not to interfere anymore. What?! The police not deciding to interfere with Sponge. That yeah, has like to be breaking actual... some kind of law right there. They're just like, you know what, let's give up. Let's just <laughs> let him go. Like, they know it's Spongebob's fault, but they just don't decide to interfere. <laughs> to get the second ending, you have to collect all the seven patties, where you have to go all the way back to the first room. Writings on the wall says to not leave. In the end, I decided to open the kitchen door. <gasps> this is it. Oh. He doesn't seem too happy. A cutscene ensues. So I'm afraid you're under arrest. Do oh. it. Do it. <laughs> what? Hopefully this game warms you up for what's to come. I did get scared in this game, but only because of the funny, scary, loud noise, which I think isn't fair. I'd also like to mention that this is my first or second time playing games that aren't on Steam. Playing this game, I realized just how huge of a goldmine website games like itch.io are.
Okay, so we just got done with a mostly silly, mostly weird game. Now here's something that's actually nightmare fuel. An absolute But I don't think he can kill me. I think he just locked- <laughs> This is Spongebob Horror. I don't even think I can describe oh, what the fuck this game is. Hi, I am real after all. Everything about it is just fever dream material. So you spawn in this abandoned warehouse, I guess. The only thing about this game that is related to Spongebob is just him. I'll talk about him soon, but first I need to mention that I have a pretty good computer. I can run most games, even the realistic ones. How are you, husband? Husband, how are you? I will lie. I, I, I need them to do And yet when I downloaded this game, which is nearly a gigabyte in size, mind you, the game was destroying my computer. It was 20 frames or under at any given point. There was no way to change the graphics because there wasn't even an option category. What? In my opinion, oh my the frames just added to the uncanniness though. So I hope you can deal with one frame moving per year for the next three minutes. SpongeBob in this game is genuinely terrifying. He can't hear you, so you can walk behind him. But the moment he sees you, he sprints the same speed the player runs and starts moving in this janky manner. You can easily outmaneuver him because his attack range is small, so that's cool, I guess. He spawns basically right next to you. Oh, great. Now my day is complete. The first level you spawn in is a single hallway with a few connecting rooms. And a room at the very end that has a hanging body that sometimes falls down. I wonder how much his remains would go for on eBay. The area is small, so if you're not careful, you could die in the first 10 seconds. Oh my god. Can I, can I lose him? Oh shit. Oh, yeah, he sprints. Oh my god. So here's the thing. I'm going off script now. The game is scary. I got goosebumps, Ian. Oh no! For the first time in months, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps playing a fucking SpongeBob horror game. But like, I don't think this is a good game. From a design point anyways. The goal is to collect three cans to start an elevator, but you can't get them without stumbling across SpongeBob. So every 30 seconds, you have to run across the hallway and back for him to stop chasing you. Because of the terrible layout, this game is extremely difficult when it easily doesn't have to be. And even when you finally start the elevator, Squidward of all people show up and dashes at you at light speed. I don't even think he can kill you. You just start flying around. Uh, oh my god! Holy shit! And then Spongebob comes in anyways and kills you. And you're sent all the way back to the beginning. It's so weird. The frames are terrible. The game is bare bones, and yet what little there is is horrifying. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? The description is full of grammatical errors. Downloading the game, there was a file I saw that's just called sex. Okay, you know what? I think it's best to leave SpongeBob Horror unfinished. It's better that this game is shrouded in even more mystery. And also, genuinely, I cannot handle the frames for another minute. Actually, I found an even more mysterious game, because I couldn't even play it. This one's called Sponge Bottom, and it looked just like any of the other games I'd be talking about. The intro started to play a super scary glitch Spongebob episode. It might be haunted. And then it faded to white and stayed like that. This better not be a joke. I tried to relaunch it twice, but nope, nothing happened. Overall, this was a 10 out of 10. Digging deeper, I found a game that's a little more simple. Now, I think to give ourselves a little break from a genuinely scary horror game, whether it was good or bad, and also the frames were shit, is to, um, play this. Faceless. Faceless is basically just Slender V8 pages, but does do a few different things. For example, before you start trying to collect things, you start at a bus stop in broad daylight. This is you, by the way. Yo, cuh, I don't even live down here. Mass lives all the way down in underwater Albuquerque. You hear? Well, your dumbass should have been paying attention. Get the fuck out of here. Shit, get the fuck out of here, man. I'm gonna walk my ass. What the f <laughs> What? <laughs> Anyways, I was probably supposed to follow the road, but instead I went over to these hills and fell out of the map. Okay, round two. This time I followed the road and noticed that I was quickly approaching the void once more. And then... Where am I going? What? Oh. Oh, well, look at the golden spatula. All right, time to survive. Instead of eight pages, you have to collect Golgen spatulas. There is literally nothing interesting about this map's geometry. It is just flat ground sprinkled in with some trees, probably by copy and pasting. 
To prove this, I made my own little level on the hammer editor, which is where you make the maps for Half-Life 2 and Gmod, and I am just gonna copy-paste this tree right here, and, oh, yeah, copy-paste it everywhere. Uh-oh, this is definitely game design. Turn that into night, boom. And yeah, here, this is basically what the game looks like. Uh, it's pretty much this. This is how they, he made the map. Look, I even made a little golden crowbar. Also, I noticed that some of the trees were the same trees used in Slimmy Tubbies. I know it's a free model, but it still caught me off guard. This game, otherwise, is pretty boring, but I did notice a glitch that I could use to help save time. By holding A or D and walking at a certain angle, I could go faster than I normally would. Some of the landmarks include the Krusty Krab, the houses, Patrick's dead body, uh... No! No! Oh. Oh, and I completely forgot about Spongebob, who has no face! There was this cool text that showed once I died, saying that the player's face was taken off. That's a pretty interesting concept. Besides that, he's really slow, and I was able to easily beat the game. And by easily, I mean running around the endless maze of same-looking trees with no map or path. Eventually, I found the last bachelor. Oh and then... <laughs> Amazing. Okay, that game was clearly a joke, so here's one that's much more lore-driven and complex. Alright, lights off, pants unshitted. It's called Squidward What Is Wrong With You, which is so scary that pregnant women are not allowed to play. Oh my. And again, I'll just have Tara read the story. It was a normal day in Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob went to his favorite job, as usual, but something was wrong. Squidward hasn't shown up to work in a week. Maybe he's sick. Maybe not. Spongebob had to work for two. On his way home, he decided to check on Squidward by going to his house. It was a mistake. This is the only game I noticed that used a third-person camera rather than a first, so that's pretty cool. You play as Spongebob and spawn outside his house. In this universe, the Krusty Krab is right next to everyone's houses. For some reason, you have to go there to work the night shift. I'm not too sure why, but then again, I did skip the cutscene intro. SpongeBob is scared that Squidward might be sick because he hasn't showed up yet, so he goes to his house. Oh no, cops! Presumably, SpongeBob died, because now you play as a cop once more. Not only that, but it is a bit like SpongeBob Massacre, because you again go into a house alone, but this time you need to collect four keys as opposed to seven burgers. I guess that makes a little more sense. This game is pretty interesting. Squidward lurks around the basement, so you have to avoid him by taking the right hallways. At one point, I thought you had to go back to the surface, but there was an invisible barrier. Except not really, because I could actually get up just by pressing A and D. A true sweat I am. Anyways, 12 years later, I finally found all the four keys that go to one door. Not sure why a door needs six keyholes, but whatever. Not sure why a door needs four keyholes, but whatever. Oh my god, it's Spongebob! So now we have to get Spongebob out of here, and he proceeds to follow us. Without getting caught by Squidward, we sneak around his gallery of amazing paintings and finally get out. We did it! <laughs> I'm not reading all that, so yeah, game's over. To escape, he was not in the house. We found numerous- oh, okay. You are win! Yes! You are win! You are win! You are win! Let's go! That was that. <laughs> I think that of all the games we'll be playing today, this is the weirdest. There's no competition. This is the game that came to mind when I thought of the word cursed. I'm not gonna bother with the description. Instead, here's some highlights of a three minute long unskippable cutscene. Battling their way out of the basement, once free, Plankton revealed a crucial plan to create a weapon powerful enough to defeat the evil clone. This just in, an ugly clone of Spongebob is on the loose, spreading his evil clones all over town. And on the lighter note, why is there an individual performing a weird dance behind me? Oh, it's Patrick! The game is a bit like Spongebob Horror, that game that felt like a fever dream, in that I've had extreme difficulty trying to grasp this game into a script. 
It's so hard to describe. So the best thing I can do is just explain at face value what happens. Karen, coming out of a portal, explains that Spongebob is trying to destroy every single dimension. To stop him, Karen opens up a portal for you to go in, saying you need to rescue Spongebob in that dimension. I'm pretty sure that this game is supposed to be a joke. It didn't look like it was trying to take itself seriously. The story is purposely silly, trying to go to different dimensions and shit. And yet, while I wasn't screaming at the top of my lungs of fear, I was just super fucking paranoid the entire time I was playing. The atmosphere is unnerving. Nothing feels friendly. The environments are nightmare-like, as a cold ambience drones loudly. The first area you spawn in is this house made out of, I guess, hardened sand? I don't know. Your task is to quote, find Spongebob. To do that though, we have to go through Patrick, who Jesus looks horrifying. Thankfully, he doesn't kill you, yet. Instead, you need to put these random boxes inside of a closet. And then it says, search for Spongebob, don't let Portrick notice you. Anyways, he eventually does find you and wants you to give him orange juice. So we give him that in a baby bottle. And now we can finally grab a key and get the hell out. The locked door opens to an expansive room, bars closing off the rest of the interior. A button on the wall lets us open it. I know this game is a joke, but like, look at this. If the game developer actually put in the effort story-wise and got rid of the jokes, he could have turned this game from a bit creepy to actually giving people heart attacks. Actually, I take that back. I think the random jokes along with the lore playing as you're in this nightmare landscape just adds to this purgatory. Anyways, now you have to grab Spongebob and get him back to your dimension. But Patrick appears behind you. So now you run for a minute. If you're coming right now, let me see it. Let me see it. Exploring empty hallways, sometimes full of random furniture and a hall of bookshelves. What is this? Uh, uh. You almost died, but you still have a job to do and need to go into the Doodle Bob universe next. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! This is about as friendly as the game's environment gets. Among the crowd, we find Doodle Bob. The player says that he needs him to help save the world. One of Karen's tips before going into the dimension was to make sure you don't touch his pencil. Well, after Doodle Bob leaves to get his things, one of the evil clones takes it. And because of that... We now have to find the pencil parts around the map to stop him from killing us. The game is now hide in a locker, wait until he leaves, explore one room, hide in locker, and repeat. This would be boring, and the game did slow to a crawl here progression-wise. But because of the tension, and dare I say, or, I consider it a pass. To find more parts of the pencil, you need to find keys to unlock doors as well. At one point, the map just goes from random rooms to skinny hallways. Anyways, I searched up this game on YouTube and discovered that Queso played it, so that ruins a bit of the horror for me. <laughs> Battling their way out of the basement. W Lord. This game, by the way, takes an hour to complete on a normal playthrough, so I'm just gonna skim over the so I'm just gonna skim over the details now. You give Doodle Bob the pencil and return back to Karen. And go through more dimensions like a homeless SpongeBob and Squidville. This is. I actually have no idea what this is. Eventually, you collect hundreds of these clones from multiple universes. Now the flowers will grow. Now you just have to collect one more SpongeBob. It's the SpongeBob of our universe. To do that, you have to defeat the evil clone in a boss fight series. The portal opens up, and without a second thought, you win. What a game that was, honestly. If I had to recommend a game to play from these, it'd probably be this one. All right, and there's one more game to cover. I'll have some fun with this. Chat, is this the scariest fucking game you've ever seen? This game is awesome. The story starts with SpongeBob working the night shift. All seems well. At 1 a.m., however, Squidward dies. Holy Squidward! <laughs> Who's banging on the door? 
gun like looks. Fucking... All right, forget the spatula. It's time to get the guns and kill the slashes. An interesting thing about this is that there's multiple ways to end the game. One way is to get into the bathrooms and enter one of the stalls. It turns out it was a dream. Except not really. Because the Krusty Krab blows up! Uh, another ending is kidnapping the corpse of Squidward and having to go back to the Krusty Krab where a metal shed lies. It's the same metal shed that was used to time travel. Okay, well, I'm in purgatory now. At least it's better than World War Plankton. How the hell did this happen? The final ending we did is having to kill 100 slashers. So it's time to go pop up some blues! Oh! Where my 20 at? I know I purchased the cosmic kush from you. You have to go to the dumpster that reveals a key to a rocket. I then went to said rocket and uh... Uh, what the hell is going on, bro? Oh, what is this? What is this game? What is this? This ending is awesome. This is the best game I've ever played, hands down, bro. Before I kick himself, decided to escape too. I assume you're lucky for your friend Sandy. Go too bad. I captured her, and I'm using her at my line. How about you? I don't need you, so I'll kill you. I ain't going out where I fought, Plankton. Bring all you got. <laughs> Hey, you just like- Oh, it's him! We gotta get him! Whoa! Plankton's revealed to be on the moon with us, with super cool robot equipment. DIE! Yeah! <laughs> no! I'm dead! Oh, no! no! <laughs> no! Oh, yeah, this is gonna be the best day ever. The best day ever is about to ensue. Oh, shit. My little ting's gone. You fucking pussy. <laughs> I'm done. These are the most cursed games I could find about SpongeBob, and now I probably have 70 viruses in my computer after playing these. I'd say it was worth it though. Playing these games was definitely interesting. I got bored playing mobile games after a while, so this is just a whole new wave of potential content I might make. So stay tuned. Anyways, in conclusion, uh. Yo, cuz, I don't even live down here. Mine says all the way down in underwater outfit. <laughs> yeah. Well, your dumbass should have been trying to Get the fuck out of here. Shut the fuck out of here.